turn with you to Joshua chapter 7. We've got a few scriptures we're going to read there. We're going to begin in verse 1. Joshua chapter 7. We begin in verse 1. Say amen when you get there. Joshua chapter 7. I'm going to read quite a few scriptures this morning. I was riding up there to Deerwood yesterday and was just listening to a few sermons and then God just began to deal with me on this subject right here. And man, it, it just it just come to life with me and that GMC Sierra, Brother Harry, I'm telling you, I've had a Holy Ghost through now going down Highway 43 up to the country yesterday. Praise God. Amen. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. Can't stand for the reading of God's word. Today, praise the Lord. The Bible says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the, in, in the cursed thing for, for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho, amen, to Ai, which is beside the haven on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but, but let two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and not make all the people to labor thither, for they were are but for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men, and they, they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell on the earth upon, the, upon his face in the ark of the Lord until the even time. And he, the elders of Israel, put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought his, this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and wealth on the other side of Jordan? O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall emurite us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they had a, they were accursed. Neither will I be with any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Up, uh, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thy enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning there ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by the households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your good blessings on our life this morning. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you till up the soil of each and every heart and soul represented under the sound of my voice so the seed, which is the word of God, would fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit. Lord, we ask you to retain the word in our hearts to, today, Lord God, and, and just ask you to help us take it outside of these four walls and, and apply it to our life, Lord Jesus, so we can live in the victory that was paid for over 2,000 years ago. Lord, I come to you just a humble servant, knowing that I'm nothing outside of you, glory to God. 
And I need you, Lord God, to give me the unction of the Holy Ghost to preach the word that you've laid on my heart this morning. And I pray, Lord God, that you'd anoint these old lips of clay and don't let me say anything outside of your will and let everything be done to uplift and encourage this morning, glory to God. And we give you the praise, honor, and glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. I know if you've been in church long enough, you've read this story about AI and what Achan done in, in this in this passage of scripture. But the Lord just began to deal with my heart on a subject as I began to, to, to pray on the way up there on 43 yesterday about the little vibes. Amen. The little vibes, praise God. And and if I'm going to be able to preach the message that the Lord gave me, I need to back up in time just a little bit and kind of lay a foundation, if you will, if you could give me just a, a few minutes of your time this morning to do that. And, you know, we know that Israel wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. And the reason they wandered around in the wilderness so long, Brother, Brother Brown told me that it would only took them 11 days to go across the wilderness. But they continued to wander around in that wilderness for 40 years because they couldn't quit griping and moaning and complaining and, and disobeying God and worshiping idols. So it took them 40 years, but finally they crossed the Jordan into the promised land. Amen. Then come, then they would come across the Jordan into the promised land and they would come to Jericho and they obeyed the Lord and they did what God told them to do and they walked around the city six days and then they walked around it on the seventh day. They did exactly what God told them to do and because they were obedient to the Lord on that seventh day the walls came come crumbling down. Y'all know the song that the kids sang. Amen doing the Jericho march and the walls come crumbling down. He did just exactly what God told him to do. And, uh, and then they move on and they come to this place called Ai. And Ai was just a small place on the east side of Bethel. The Bible says in verse 3 that we read already. It was a small place and it had a few people. So they, they just sent a few thousand soldiers, the Bible says. Amen. They, they, didn't, they didn't send the whole, uh, the whole camp because it was just a little place. And the spies told Joshua, we can just send maybe two or three thousand people to the city of Ai. It'll be no problem. We'll knock it on out. We'll overcome them. And then we'll move on to the next place. Amen. But the Bible says when they got to Ai, amen, they were smoked by them. Amen. And uh, 30, I think it was 35, maybe 30 something people ended up losing their lives. And the rest of them took tail and took off back to the camp. Amen. Amen. It was just a, such a small place. Amen. And these group of people smote them and they lost the battle at Ai. Amen. They won the battle in their heart and mind in the wilderness to cross the Jordan. Can you say amen? And I want to tell somebody this morning, if it ain't for just me, it's for somebody in this place this morning, that that is the most important battle right there, to win the battle in the mind, glory to God. That's the big battle, amen, to win it in your mind so you can get it in your heart that you can trust God in the battle. So they won the battle in the wilderness and they crossed the river Jordan and into the promised land. Amen. And then they get to the Jericho and they won the big battle and defeated this big city of Jericho by obeying the Lord. But then they, they, they come to Ai and they lose this battle of just a small city amen, a small group of people praise God. And the reason why they lost the battle at Ai is because a man named Achan disobeyed God in Jericho and he grabbed a battle on his garment and some gold and silver and God told him not to touch anything or take anything out of that city so because of his disobedience he made the, the, the children of Israel it allowed them to lose such a small battle in their life come on somebody give me this morning Amen. 
Amen. The Bible says in chapter 6 and verse 18 that he was not supposed to take anything out of the camp. And all the gold and silver was supposed to go in the Lord's treasury. Amen. Praise God. How many of you know as a Christian there are things that we are not supposed to touch? I know that we see this group that's coming around today, amen, and they say there ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of this, and there ain't nothing wrong with doing that. We got preachers that's preaching behind a pulpit that's living with women that ain't their wives this day. Come on, somebody, hear me tonight. There's some people that say there ain't nothing wrong with it. But if you read the Bible, if you read the guidelines of a Christian, and that's inside of Genesis and Revelation, there are some things that we cannot touch. There are some things that we cannot partake in as God's children. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all took it a lot better than I thought you were. <laughs> There's some things that we can't touch and some things that we can't partake in because there's consequences that we have to pay when we do those things. Can you say Amen. And it's more than just a slap on the wrist. As you see in this passage of Scripture in Ai, 30-something men lost their lives because of the disobedience of one man in the camp. Can you say amen? And I want to hear you, I want to tell you today that there are consequences that we will pay if we touch the unclean thing, if we partake in the things that we're not supposed to as children of God. Can you hear me this morning? Praise the Lord. Now, because of Achan's disobedience, and him taking the stuff and that wasn't he wasn't supposed to touch, the people of Israel were no, no no longer able to win the battles because they were cursed from him partaking in the things that he was not supposed to be partaking in. They're not able to win this little old rinky big town outside of Bethel out there. They can't go and do what they just did to this big break city because of disobedience in the camp. Can you hear me this morning? Praise the Lord. Amen. They're not able to win those little battles. Amen. Now we, 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 they were winning all the big battles, as I made mention. They won in the promised land, crossing the river Jordan. They won in Jericho. But now all of a sudden they're not winning the small, minute things in their life. Praise God. And I think we get like that sometimes. Can somebody say amen to me this morning? Boy, we've won the big battles in our life. Our family's restored. Lord, feel the Holy Ghost out right here. Our family's restored. Amen. Our home's in good shape. Our finances is in good shape. Come on, somebody. Amen. Our ministry is in good shape. But now, all of a sudden, we allow that a curse thing to come in our life, whatever it may be. And now, all of a sudden, we lose in the battle with our attitude. Come on, I'm preaching to myself this morning. Glory to God. We're losing the battle with our attitude. Now, all of a sudden, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't winning those small battles. Amen. We're not watching what we, what we say anymore. We're slipping on into that. That gossip that uh, Sister Frappy y'all likes to do down the road. Come on, somebody. Amen. All of a sudden, we're not watching what we're saying, and we're slipping in our prayer line, and we're not spending the time that we need with God. We're not winning those small battles. Can you say amen to me this morning? Amen. amen. We to, we're losing those battles in how we treat people. We're losing those battles and paying our tithes. Come on, somebody. I'm not out here. I'm telling you, when I preach on tithes, it's not to influence you to pay them to this church. Because I can stand on this platform today and say whether you pay your tithes or not, God's going to take care of this place. Amen. Because His hand is on the glory to God. Now, I appreciate all our faithful tithe payers. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, but when I preach on paying tithes, it's not to get you to pay your tithes to this church. It's you to obey God where you can be blessed. Amen. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we start losing those small battles in our lives, praise God. And I want to tell you this morning, every battle that we win in life is determined whether or not we're going to obey God or not. Amen. Come on. Amen. Whether we're going to be obedient to the Spirit of God is going to determine whether you walk in victory or defeat. Can you say amen? amen. Because God's power that He gives us lies in obedience to His Word. 
He can't operate outside of this right here. He can't operate outside of this. So if you don't got the mother drugs because, you know, things ain't going right in your life, you need to check your life and make sure you're operating inside of this Bible, amen? Don't go blaming God for what you done got yourself into because you stepped out and didn't disobey God, amen? Don't go blaming God because you started touching the unclean thing because I promise you, Peter, the book of Peter tells us that if we make our calling and election sure, that we cannot fail, glory to God. And I know people think that that means that you need to make sure you're doing what God's called you to do and nothing else. But I'm going to tell you how God revealed it to me. He said, if you wake up every day of your life and you elect to do what my word says, then you will not fail in your life. I can't never tell, amen, you a time in my life where I did what God told me to do and I fell flat on my face. Can you say amen? It was always when Shane Hammond started taking control is when I slipped into failure, praise God. So when you make your calling and election sure, you will not fail if it's according to this Bible. Praise the Lord. But every battle we fight, every battle we win is determined on being obedient. Amen. So when we allow things that God does not approve of in our lives, we cannot expect to win the battles. Don't get all bent out of shape if things ain't going right and you ain't obeying God because guess what? It's not his fault. It's yours. It's mine. Amen. I can tell you that right now. He's 100% faithful all the time. Amen. And we'll hit our knees and we'll humble ourselves and say, God, nobody likes to admit we're wrong. I'm telling you right now, I fight it to the tooth and nail sometimes when my wife's right and I know she is and I don't put my foot in my mouth, I'm going to walk out there in the yard until the Holy Ghost just breaks me on down and i got to go in there and apologize. Come on, somebody. That's just how we are. Amen? And prior gets in, I ain't got time to get into all that. Amen? But don't go blame, blame, blaming him because his Bible says, nay, nay, and all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen? So it's only through Him. It's only by His Word. It's only by the presence of an Almighty God that dwells within us that we can be victorious. And when we allow the accursed thing to come in our lives, we are telling God, I don't need your help. I've got it under control. And I can guarantee you 100% of the time when we do that, we're just going to fall flat on our face. I'm telling you, I've done it plenty of times. Still do it all the time. Amen. Glory to God for His grace and mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, To come out from among them, and be ye separate, and touch not the unclean thing. And He says, I will receive you, saith the Lord. Amen. That doesn't mean that we can go out and we can partake in the sinful things of this life and expect to live in the blessings of God. That doesn't mean when you read in the Bible and you see what God's promises is and it's not happening in your life, but you look a little bit deeper in your heart and see the disobedient. That's why it's not there, praise God. Because He's going to come through 100% of the time, praise the Lord. When our desire, uh, you know, I want to get too, get too far ahead of myself, but Paul told the church of Corinth. Well, they had some junk going on in that church. Come on, somebody. You read about that church, he had to write two books on them because they was in some bad shape. Can you hear me? Huh? Galatia must have been pretty good. I don't know. They just a few chapters in Philippi. They must have been, I don't know. But, but Corinthians, son, they, they was in bad shape. And he told them in the first chapter, I believe it is Corinthians, he said, the reason that you're like you are is because you're carnal. It's because you are of the world, amen? It's because your desire is to be more like them than to be like Christ, amen? That's why you're in the shape that you're in, because your desires of your heart is to be carnal and not like-minded to Christ, amen? Your desire is not to apply the Word of God in your life. Your desire is to seek all the things that the world has to offer. 
And he says they were carnal, praise God. And I want to tell you, that's the way we get. When our desire to seek the carnal things of this world outweighs our desire of the things of God, we're going to be in the same shape that they were in. Come on, hear me this morning, praise the Lord. I'm sure I ain't the only one that's ever been there or seen it happen before because I've seen it in this church and every other church that you go in and it's happened in my life too, amen. You see somebody that comes to the Lord and they just love the Lord and they're doing great things for God, amen. They got faith, amen, to move mountains, praise God. But little by little, the things of this world catches their eye and draws them slap out of the presence of the Lord. Come on, somebody, amen. Glory to God, hear me today, praise the Lord. But if we will trust in God, amen, and touch not the unclean thing, we're going to win that little battle, amen. And that's the one the Bible says is going to trip us up the most. He said the small foxes is what spoils the vines. Those little battles in our life, amen. You see, the reason why Israel was able to win those big battles at Jericho was because they had started winning the small battles in the wilderness. Come on now. I ain't got time to preach all that. But they stopped complaining. Come on, somebody. They stopped worshiping that golden calf, amen, that Moses got so mad about. They stopped worshiping all these other things and started worshiping God. And God said, all right, that 11-day journey might have been 40 years now, praise God. But I'm just going to let you go over here where I promised you'd be when Abraham was walking around. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm telling you, when we start winning the small battles in our life and our walk with God, we will march across the Jordan River on the Jericho and able to defeat the big battles in our life. But we got to defeat the small ones first. Amen. Yeah. I don't want to make some people mad here. Lord. No. Our marriage is a prime example. If you're married, if you're not, then praise the Lord. Amen for that. <laughs> 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 I got a good woman and I appreciate her every day of my life. Amen. I believe every man needs a Holy Ghost filled woman. Glory to God. Amen. To, to support them and be there for them. But our marriage is the same way. Amen. In order to win the big battles in our marriage, we first got to win the small ones first. And I'm no professional at it. Some of y'all have been married longer than I've been alive. But I have grown. I ain't quite there yet, brother, but I'm getting there. I see the goal anyhow, amen. And I see that you got to win the small battles to win the big battle in your marriage, praise God. I know that you got to respect each other, amen. you got to win that battle, amen. you got to respect each other. you got to take up for one another when everybody else is against you. Come on, somebody. Amen. you got to win those small battles. you gotta, you got to love each other unconditionally. Come on, somebody. you got to love the bad just as good as you love the good, amen. you got to win that small battle, amen. My wife, I ain't going to call that a small battle, but anyhow, praise the Lord. You got to care for each other, and even when things get rough, you still got to endure it. Amen. And I promise you, when you can win those small battles in your marriage, amen, you will have peace in your home, which is a big battle. Come on, somebody. You'll have peace in your home. You'll have unity in your home. Come on, hear me this morning. Praise God. Amen. You'll set an example for your children, and you'll raise up children to love God. Amen. Those are the bigger battles. Amen. But in order to obtain victory in the big battles, you got to start out with the small battles. Amen. And we didn't get too many. We got one back there. She must love her husband. <laughs> it's like anything else. I don't know if any of y'all play sports, but I love it coming up. And if you want to get good at a sport, you got to start at the fundamentals of it. You ain't just going to go out there and just start driving them over center field fence. You've got to get the fundamentals of your stance. You've got to get the fundamentals of how to swing the bat. Amen. You can swing as hard as you want to and dribble it right in front of you. But if you can get the fundamentals right, you can swing half as hard and hit it slap out of the park. Amen. It's all about winning the little battles in order to obtain the big victories in life. Amen. Come on, somebody. And the only way that we're going to do that is trust God. Praise God. But when we're able to win the small battles, 
we'll win the big battles in life. Praise God. I'm fixing to close too if you want to be coming. I'm really going to be making some people mad, especially after last night right here. But Nick Saban, y'all still with me? It's the best coach that ever coached college football, and even Mississippi State fans will tell you that right now. He's the best. If he goes to Mississippi State next year, I promise you, within three years, he'll win a national championship with him. That's just the way it is. He's the best, and the only reason he is the best is because he gets the small victories won first. And he'll tell his players, he trains his players, that if you will not focus on winning this game, but you'll focus on what you're supposed to be doing at that moment and at that time, then those small victories that you have on the field will turn into big plays in the, in the game, which turns into winning games, which turns into winning championships. But it all starts with those small victories. It's all, it all starts by, by being disciplined to do what your position says that you need to do, amen? And his record speaks for itself. He was a winner before he came to Alabama, amen? He'll be a winner when he leaves. Come on, somebody, amen? But it all starts with those small victories. And I came to tell somebody this morning, if you can discipline your walk with God to have those small victories, to not let your prayer life slip, to spend time time with God each and every day of your life and in His Word and to serve wholeheartedly, glory to God, those small victories that you win in your life is going to turn into the big battles being victorious too, praise the Lord. Amen. It's all about the smallness. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that if you're faithful over the few things, He'll make you ruler over me. Now He's not talking about number there. I mean, I know that a few in our eyes means just a couple, maybe three, amen. Turner says a few means three. It'll get straightened out real quick. That's how many it means. But he's not saying if you're faithful over three things, then he'll make you ruler over many. He's saying if you're faithful over the small things in your walk with God. He's going he's gonna to promote you to places in this in the kingdom of God while you're on this planet that you're not qualified to go because you were faithful over the future glory to God. You were faithful over the small things in your walk with God. He's just going to elevate your walk to a place where you can start leading people to the Lord, to a place where you're going to be serving and doing great things for God. If we could get those small guys born, they can stand all over God's house for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I want to read a scripture closing today as I continue to close. Hebrews 12 and verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also, also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which do so, so easily beset us, and let us run the race with patience, the race that is set before us. And then he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. He's telling you, if you'll start laying those things aside and you'll start getting those small victories and start fighting those small battles in your life, He'll give you the power and the authority that comes directly from the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. So we can be victorious in those big battles in our life. Pray with me this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your